intro. Good intro like what? Haven't you watched the channel? How do we always start? Welcome back to the MotoFab YouTube channel. We're in here making cool carbon fiber tubs and cool chrome molly chassis and fuel cells and all that bizzo. I've got to be really, really quick because you guys asked for some suspension tech this episode and a lot more about instant. And it, the only reason I don't put it in is because it takes so long to talk about and then if I make long videos, we don't get many views. So I try to keep them short. Uh, and you don't want to listen to me waffle on all day, but I've waffled a fair bit about that. So I'm not going to talk too much about this. I'm just going to say, enjoy, get into it. Enjoy this car, build's coming along, we finish very soon. And bloody like and subscribe, there's been heaps of new subscribers this week and appreciate it. And uh, it looks like you guys like the Barra. Freaking big block guy myself. Big block, small block, but yeah well, see how the Barra goes. Back with the Barra, we've got some projections going on. We're going to show you that in this video. We're going to show you instant sound suspension, all the stuff you've been asking for. You saw all the cage last week. It's in there. It's tight and tidy. And uh, you saw some of the bars last week, but now we've got the tank in. We've got the shocks in, and the carbon fiber tubs. The carbon fiber tubs are available on the Motorfab website. Check them out lightest coolest tub around australian made uh, and available through us so jump on the website they're ready to go you can buy them right now uh the back here so this is what we were starting to go over the shock uh as we're going to explain in this video leaf springs separate the uh, on the hit and then all the way down the track if you're doing your show, you're doing your stuff right so having that mount really nice and tight and, and and just letting the shock do its job is so important that's the secret behind all of this back end of the chassis that's why we didn't we're going to put a cage in a meat tech we're going to do the back half too it's not that much extra work and it looks rad there's our, our revised slider uh, a few guys asking about the ute kit let us get this one done let us test let us prove that it works and does its thing and then we will offer that for sale uh, we've put the tank in there, uh, just a good spot for it. Uh, this car is pretty light in the bum now, so we are trying to keep some a little bit of weight at the back. Uh, and then a controlled amount of weight too for no prep will fill the tank up. For radial stuff, we won't run so much fuel in it, easy. Uh, there you go, so literally now all we've got to do is fit out the carbon fiber sheets, which is going to be pretty cool in itself. And then once that's done, we're going to weld it all up and get it out of here and get it out onto the track. Do some testing and this car will always be on the channel. You'll always be able to see what's happening. Um, so yeah, there's those tubs there. Come out really nice. We're gonna sheet in around the back there, uh, all the front here. We've also got, you might be able to see it. You guys all followed the Tirana build and uh, you'll see right here, we got that little motor fab edging. Uh, that's that kit that we're working on at the moment too. Not on the website yet, but will be. You'll be able to buy that and fit these carbon fiber sheets. This whole stack of carbon fiber sheet there. It's gonna push into there and it's gonna be cool. So there you go. I've talked a lot about suspension in this video, so I'm not gonna waffle on too much about the car. You saw all that last week. Enjoy. Okay, here we go. I'm sorry guys, I'm about take 27 because of that crow. He will not go away. So we're just gonna have to deal with the crow. Um, I'm sure I can outlast him. So people keep asking why, why don't you do an instant center video? Why don't you do a leaf spring setup video? Because I could literally waffle on for days, not hours. And then if I don't condense my videos on a short time, viewers go down, videos are crap. So it's really hard to put so much information. So I think what we'll do is we'll break it up over a few videos, um, but we're gonna tackle a fair old whack of it today. Um, and it's hard because everyone's at a different level, everyone understands different stuff. But today we're gonna focus primarily on instant center. 
Uh, instance center is where the suspension actuates on the car and the, what that does to the car. I'm gonna make it real simple for you. Uh, squat and anti-squat is how we used to do it. Everyone's now gone into separation. Separation is just a whole heap of anti-squat. Um, now what that means is when the car launches, does the back end separate or does the back end squat? Almost all cars are getting into separation now. They figured out planning the tire is more important than trying to rip the front up because when you try to rip the front up, the thing wants to stand on the back bumper bar. So let's look at why that does what it does. And we go back to the basics. The engine driving the car is driving the gearbox, driving the diff, driving the wheel. The wheel's turning this way. Every time the wheel turns this way, it rolls out and it pushes the car along the ground this way. Now, every action has an equal and opposite reaction. So that, that tire turning that way, the same amount of force that it is turning with, the diff is trying to rotate the opposite way to fight the force against it. So that acts on the suspension. Now, where the suspension mounts to the car, that rotational force, the opposite way to what the car is trying to go, is going to act on the suspension. So you can imagine that the wheel's going this way and it's fighting a big lever trying to go that way. It's trying to stand the car up. Now, if it acts, let's say here on the car, and it's trying to turn that way, well, it's gonna be like a wheelbarrow, right? It's gonna to try to stand up in the back, a lot of separation. If its actuation point is out here, it's gonna to try to flip that car over on the back bumper bar. Now, working out which way it's gonna go is a little more complex, because it doesn't just go off where the suspension mounts the car. In a four link, you got a bottom bar, top bar, project them out where the cross line is, if it's under the line, over the line. Uh, under the line, it's gonna lift, over the line, it's gonna squat to a degree, depending on how far out. I'm not gonna to go too much into complex, so it's probably gonna get torn apart in the comments by the experts, but I'm trying to help everyone from the beginner to the expert, uh, and I think the best way to do it is just to keep getting further and further into it as our videos go. Now, the blue line there is our center of gravity line. No one can measure that exactly right. You have to have an educated guess, then you have to make passes, and you have to video, and you have to shock sensor, and do all the stuff that we've done to go, okay, we thought that's where the line was, but the car's actually doing something different when it's just over the line or just under the line. We're gonna to have to adjust the line a little bit. So a rule of thumb is around the center of the, on, this is a big six. We're gonna go for about the center of the motor. On a V8, traditionally we go between the cam and crank center line in the center of the block. It's different for blower cars, nitrous cars, turbo cars, because they're different weight over the front axle. Okay, well, we'll come back to that in a second. Now, leaf spring car, as I suggested, you got a top arm, bottom arm, very easy to calculate and project out. Uh, sorry, a falling car. A leaf spring car is much different. It, it's only got one mounting point at the back. At the front, one at the back, the back one has a burden, uh, has a, an effect on it, but it, uh, it's a little different. So we're going from the axle center line through our front mount, and we're going from our bottom pivot point of our bar through our front mount. And if we get down there, so in there is the bar underneath. That's our crossover point. And you can see that there is just above our center of gravity line. Now what the center of gravity line is, I've jumped ahead. If you flipped the car up on its end, at vertical, it would flip over backwards. That line, theoretically, is the point where the car would balance, like a motorbike doing a wheelie. So theoretically, when that blue line is vertical, the car would be a little angle like this still, but it's where it would want to flip. It doesn't flip at vertical, it flips before vertical. Now, to take that in consideration, if this car had, let's say, a V8 in it, two cylinders, four is from here back. So we're in the middle, we're, in, we're on cylinder uh, three, in, the, in between three and four. Um, no, well, we're right on three. So we would only have one cylinder past that, whereas we've got two more on the end. So that center would move back to say here, and then that would change the angle of that line, which in our instance, if this car had a V8, that would be enough. So our crossover point, you'd move that line up. We would be probably underneath it. So this car would then go from separation to squat. Now, the beauty of a leaf spring setup is we have a traction bar underneath. The traction bar underneath separates the car. It doesn't care where the instant center is. It doesn't care about squat, any squat. It's gonna separate the car. 
to the fantastic thing about leaf spring cars that you can get away with it. You pretty much can't with a falling car. You, you can, but that's a whole story for another day. You can set that leaf spring up so that it has squat, but it still will separate. So it's getting so much extra plant on the tire that was not available with a four-link car. Uh, it's just not tunable like a four-link car. You, what you see is what you get. You're sort of stuck with it. To a degree, we can tweak it. So uh, if you look at this car and the setup the way that we've got it right now, it, it's going to separate. It's a ute and it has a big, heavy six-cylinder barrel motor in the front of it. That's putting a lot of weight and it's giving us a very low, long trajectory on our instant center. If it was a sedan and our weight balance was back further and we had a, a V8 engine back further and a big blower on it, this line would be drastically steeper. Sorry about the compressor. When it's drastically steeper, our suspension point is going to end up way down low and it's going to make this thing on a wheelie this car doesn't wheelie it doesn't pick up the front wheels now we're going to shift the instant center a little like remembering the thing hooks up pretty good um we want to get a little bit more instant center because we've taken so much weight out of the back now so we've, we've discussed that different drive line choices different body shapes are going to affect that line you can't measure that line you have to guess that line and then an educated guess and then you have to tweak it with data each time you make a pass this back for leaf spring we are going from the bottom pivot of the traction bar to the front eye of the spring not the bottom pivot of the traction bar it's irrelevant on the front at the back we're going to the bottom pivot of the bar itself on the front we're going to the the front spring eyelet we're also trajecting another line from the axle center line through that same front eye point and the intersection is what's giving us our suspension actuation point that's the theoretical point when the wheel turns forward the diff turns back that's the theoretical point that this car will try to act on the body of the car that's the part that's connecting the the driving forward force to the vehicle itself again on a four link we would project the two lines like that project them out and then where they cross over is where we would act to actuate. Now, people say you can't change instant center on a leaf spring car. Well, you can actually. As we've done here, we've lifted up the back, which pushes it further down. We can flatten out the spring, which pushes it further down. We can also lower the front, which pushes it further down, or lift the front, whichever we want to achieve. Now, that is a static instant center. The only time this car will ever see that instant center is when it's sitting there like that or sitting on the start line with the trans brake on and the light hasn't gone green yet. Once the buttons let go, that thing's gonna separate. So that suspension's gonna go down and that instant center's gonna shoot up. So what we need to do is plant the tire on the hit, get the front wheel to come up off the ground, and as it's coming up, then we're gonna, the spring is gonna go down, the car's gonna separate, and the instant center is going to shift drastically up. But once we're up on the back wheels and nothing else is touching the ground, when the instant center is shifting up, it's good because it's going to keep the front down. It's going to weight the front. So then we're going to jam a heap more power into it. That's the trick of how you go fast is you get this, the, what's called the live instant center, which is the instant center as the car's moving down the track. That's what is going to matter. So we have to have enough to hit the tire and plant the tire and get the car to go and pick the front wheel up. Then we have to have... A, a moving instant center to be able to apply more power. Uh, so I think that's a lot of information to take in. It's very hard to explain it um, in video format in, in, in a short time frame, but I've tried my best and uh, please enjoy, comment, let me know what you think. I'm trying to do what you guys ask in the comments. So let them come.